Namaste, everyone. Namaste. 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 Hello. So, in our previous class, we learned about great architecture of Kakatiyas and also about Rudrama Devi. So, we will continue learning about Rudrama Devi in this episode. Rudrama Devi completed the construction of nearly impregnable Varangal fort. She finished the work that Ganapati Deva has started. Apart from that, she has also increased the height of the fort and great engineering skills that we have seen in the construction of uh, Thousand Pillar Temple and other uh, Ramapa Temple and other temples that we have seen in our previous video. Uh, the same great engineering skills were used to build this fort. Amir Khusru uh, praises about this uh, Varangal fort and he says that its turrets rose up in air and soared up to the moon while its bottom passing below water reached the fish. So he talks about how strongly built this fort Ooh. was. Yes. Also, Kakatiyas brought large tracts under cultivation which greatly increased their revenue. They came up with temple tank town concept uh, which was later adopted by uh, Vijayanagara rulers after the fall of Kakatiyas. Before the, yes, before the 11th century, much of the dry Deccan interior was inhabited by herders. Kakatiyas and their feudatories built more than 5,000 reservoirs wow. or tanks by damming small streams. These tanks were often ma managed by small temples which were endowed by the nobles. This caused the spread of agriculture and the settlement of the land by immigrants and herders. Interesting. Most of these tanks are still in use today. Really? Mo yes, most of the water that um, Varangal gets come from Badrakali Cheruvu, which was built by Kakatiyas. And there are other um, uh, tanks like Ramapa tank or Parakala Cheruvu. All these are still in use. And mm. most of the water in and around Varangal are supplied by these tanks, which were built at least thousand years ago by Kakatiyas. Wow! Yes, because uh, that area was a very dry area. It doesn't have any rivers. So they were uh, harvesting all the water that was coming from the street streams into the tank. So there is consistently water uh, for their present for the people who were living in Varangal and around Varangal and uh, for them to cultivate the land and also increase the agricultural produce. Another change introduced by Rudrama and which carried on into Pratapurudra's time was the recruitment of non-aristocratic warriors from the diverse castes as officers and landowners. The older feudal families were gradually supplanted and land grants given to new uh, meritocratic officers. This policy was also used in the later empire of Vijayanagara. Now, one of the travelers, that is Marco Polo, who visited Varangal during really? Rudrama's Yes, Marco Polo visited during Rudrama Devi's reign and he praises that they possess they in uh, here means uh, Kakatiyas and also people who were being ruled by Kakatiyas. He says that they possess all the great treasures of the world. He refers to the diamond production and fabric industry and praises that even their buckram were so thin and smooth that they are fit for any royalty in this world. And he also points out that they had largest sheep in the world. He praises that they had all the necessities of life in great abundance. And he praises Rudrama Devi that she was very loving and caring towards her subjects and was a very strong queen who could push back her um, uh, enemies to their boundaries. Rudrama ruled for at least 40 years and 
presided over the golden age of the Kakatiyas. She is the only independent female ruler mentioned by Marco Polo in wow. his uh, journey through so many kingdoms across the world. Marco Polo, remember? He was yeah. going around the whole world, but uh, he only mentioned uh, Rutrama Devi as the strongest queen that he has seen uh, oh. throughout his journey around the world. So Rudrama, uh, apart from that, Rudrama encouraged the practice of Perini Shiva Tandavam um, by the soldiers. Perini Shiva Tandavam was an extremely vigorous and powerful dance done to the beat of drums by the soldiers as a prelude to war and was part of the training of royal forces. This dance, this dance form nearly died out after the end of Kakatiya dynasty and has recently been revived yes. by Padma Shri Dr. Nataraja Ramakrishna by studying the poses depicted in the Ramapa temple at Warangal and other sources. Hmm, this sounds like the Maoris in New Zealand. Um, like they did like the Hakka dance before the war. Maoris, yes, um, yes, they have this custom of doing a uh, war dance, yes. The same way Kakatiyas had Perini Shiva Tandavam. So in spite of the continuous warfare, uh, her kingdom was tremendously rich, not least because uh, it was the only known source of diamond production in the world. Um, the Kohinoor, incidentally, was from the Kollur mines and is rumoured to have been the eye of a sculptor, a sculpture in Barangal during Kakatiya times. It is supposed to have been carried to Delhi by uh, Malik Kafur and later passed on to Mughals as part of Delhi treasury. And I, we know that uh, it changed hands, many hands. From Delhi Sultanate, it went to Punjab. And from Punjab, it ultimately reached the Queen of... England. Queen of England. And she has it in her crown now. Um, also, Kakatiyas were exporting not only diamonds, but they were also exporting um, famed fabrics. Um, so these were two commodities they were exporting. Rudrama's uh, reign came to an end um, when she was at the age of 82. Uh, one of her few dataries, Ambadeva, um, started uh, trying to get independent. So she went uh, to fight a war against Ambadeva and uh, she uh, lost her life in the battle. Uh, but Rudrama Devi was succeeded by her grandson Pratap Rudra in 1289 who later defeated Ambadeva and he was a great king. Uh, Pratap Rudra was a great king who reconquered lost territories Yay. and was at the zenith of his glory. Um, 20 years into his reign, that is till 1309. Whoa! Yes, but from 1309 there have been many attacks uh, from Delhi Sultanate. So the first attack was in 1309 and later on the second one was um, was in 1318 and then in 1320 Prataparudra won against uh, uh, the Tug Tuglaks. And later on, uh, um, they were attacked again. Uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq has sent uh, an army, much bigger army than he has sent in 1320. He sent a much bigger army in 1323 to attack Warangal. Um, they camped outside of Warangal fort as they couldn't break the fort and get in and started 
they started plundering the villages around it and cut off all the supplies into Warangal. Warangal, even if the supplies were cut off, would have been fine because they had a tank inside the fort. They had uh, all. They were producing all the agricultural things for themselves, so they were self-sufficient. But Prataparudra uh, surrendered. Uh, to Muhammad bin Tughlaq's army to save the villages from getting plundered and was captured by Muhammad bin Tughlaq's uh, army. With Prataparudra's death, glorious Kakatiya's rule came to an end. Although Kakatiya's rule ended, they left behind majestic structures. Although plundered and ruined by the invaders, they still are majestic and people still do visit the temples even today. And the numerous tanks uh, built by Kakatiya's are still main sources of water in various places in and around Warangal. So, uh, what do you say about Kakatiya's? They're amazing! They're amazing! from me yes thank you for teaching us thank you you're welcome everyone see you next time bye